So we are going to be reading a story called The Scarlet Ibis. So let's talk about some of the literary devices that we will be applying to this story. First, I want to talk about figurative language. And this is a great one to talk about because we see figurative language in short stories, in novels, in poetry. So it kind of transcends all different types of written work. And that's words and expressions that aren't intended to be literal. Um, it, rather, it uses imagination and comparison to give us uh, an image of what the author's trying to create. So, for example, it's raining cats and dogs. It's not literally raining cats and dogs, but it lets us know that it's raining quite hard outside. The two types I want to talk about specifically with a story are similes. That's a comparison of two unlike things using like or as. So, for example, he was as beautiful as the sunset. So now we know, you know, what this guy looks like. He's a good-looking guy. We can also use metaphor, and that's a comparison without using like or as. So you're literally saying that one thing is another in a non-literal sense. So it says, man, that guy is an ox. So they're not saying he's, he's really an ox. It just gives us an image of this very big, strong guy. Let's talk about imagery. And that's when language appeals to the senses, okay? So it might appeal to our sense of taste or touch, smell, sound, sight, or in this case, the sixth sense. Um, so these senses, these sensory details really kind of make the story more vivid for us, the reader. Let's talk about mood as well. And that's the atmosphere or feeling that a writer creates in a piece of literature through language and word choice. So, for example, if you take the stereotypical, it was a dark and stormy night, you know, it's probably going to have a creepy mood in the story rather than happy and sunny. And lastly, let's talk about a symbol. And that's literally when something stands for something other than itself. When an object with its own value has a larger concept or idea. So, for example, the red rose. And this is good to know before homecoming, ladies and gentlemen. A red rose is often a symbol for love. Pink roses are a symbol for like. Yellow roses are a symbol for friendship. White roses mean like maybe there's something. Unless you hate your date, please don't give a black rose. That's generally not a great idea. So again, the terms we've discussed in the past are also fair game, but these are the terms we're going to be specifically applying to the scarlet ibis. And again, you could expect possibly a little quiz to review your understanding of these terms. Have a nice day.